Hey everyone, welcome back. We'll do section one two today, which is absolute value. It'll probably be a little mix of review and maybe some new stuff. We'll see. So let's start with the definition. The absolute value, we're gonna get maybe a little fo more formal of a definition than we're used to. Um, most of us know it as just like the positive value, um, but the more formal mathy definition is if we take the absolute value, it'll equal x if x is greater than or equal to zero, right? So if the absolute value of five is five, right? The absolute value of six is six, right? So notice the inside number and the output are the same. Instead, if we have a negative number inside, it's actually the opposite, and we'll see why. So the absolute value of negative five is positive five, right? So that's really negative x, which is negative negative five, and that's what switches it to positive. Right, the absolute value of negative six is six, right? So x is equal to negative six, so six would be negative x. So this is the more mathy definition, and this will be really useful um, in this class, and you'll need to remember this for calculus. So knowing this definition will be important. So put a star next to it, put it on a flashcard. It'll be a really useful definition. So even probably all of us have seen absolute value, but maybe we haven't seen this more formal definition of it. Um, some properties, the absolute value of a is negative a, right? Absolute value of 5 and negative 5 are the same thing. Um, the only way to get 0 is the absolute value of 0. So if and only if just means you can go either way. So if the absolute, yeah, you can go either way. So we can start with absolute value of a equals 0, then a equals 0, or if a equals 0, then the absolute value is also 0. Um, we can break up products. So the absolute value of 50 would be the same as the absolute value of 5 times 10, right? So absolute value of 5 times the absolute value of 10, that's allowed. Division is also allowed. So we can split it up. The absolute value of 7 over the absolute value of 5 is the same whether they're in the same absolute value or separate. And that has to do with multiplying and dividing, right? If they're both positive or they're both negative, it turns positive. So it's fine. Um, and then addition cannot be broken up in inequality. Um, but the absolute value of A plus B is less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. So let's look at some examples of that. So let's start with two positive numbers. So five plus three, and then five plus three, right? Absolute value of five plus three, and then absolute value of five plus absolute value of three. Let's see if they're the same or different. So on the right side, I get absolute value of eight, which is eight, or sorry, on the left side. On the right side, I get five plus three, which is eight. So in this case, they're equal which is still true because I said or equal. So if they're both positive, it seems like they're equal to each other. Let's try negative. So negative five plus negative three. So negative five plus negative three is negative eight and the absolute value brings us back to positive eight. On the right side, we get five. And absolute value of negative five is five. Absolute value of negative 3 is 3, so we actually get the same number again. So they're equal, so it fits that equality case. So it seems like maybe if the signs of the numbers are the same, we get the same value. So let's go ahead and check out what happens if the no signs are different. Uh, so let's try 5 plus negative 3. And is that the same as 5? Absolute value of 5 plus absolute value of 3. So on the left side, 5 plus negative 3 is 2. So absolute value of 2, which is 2. And then on the right side, we get 5, and we get 3, and we get 8. So this one fits the less than case. So it looks like when the signs are opposite, we don't quite get the same number. So addition will not always be equal is basically the main point. So you can't split up an absolute value by addition. It just doesn't work. So hopefully that last example convinced you that it's not always equal. 
So just some properties, hopefully we've seen them. If not, make some flashcards so you can remember them. Um, let's practice using this definition now. So, oops. There we go. So let's practice the definition. So sometimes in calculus, you'll have to rewrite it as like this piecewise function. Um, there's some things we just can't do without an absolute value, with an absolute value, so we need to get rid of it. So I'm going to do this piecewise function. So the absolute value of x minus 6 will equal x minus 6 if, and then in this case, x is an x, x is x minus 6. So if x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. So I'm taking that definition, and everywhere I see x, I'm changing it to x minus 6. And we'll do the same thing. So negative x minus 6, those parentheses are super important if x minus 6 is less than 0. And this is pretty much it. I'm maybe going to make it look slightly nicer because this is a little hard to read. So I don't really like x minus 6 greater than or equal to 0. I could rewrite that as x greater than or equal to 6. And the second one we could write as x less than 6. And we could also get rid of the negative sign if we wanted to. So x minus 6 when x is greater than or equal to 6. And then it will be negative x plus 6, right? Distribute that negative when x is less than 6. Um, and this will help us graph absolute values. Um, it helps us do some calculus with them later when you get into calculus, um, just because we need to get rid of that symbol. Cool. So let's go ahead and do one more example in this video, and then we'll take a little break and try the next video later. Um, we also use absolute value to find distance. If you think about describing distance, it's usually positive, right? You could travel five miles to the right or five miles to the left, and we describe them both positive, even though they're kind of opposite directions. So we're going to define the distance between A and B. We're going to use D for distance, would be the absolute value of B minus A. So if we want to do the distance between negative 3 and 7, we'll do the absolute value of 7 minus negative 3, which is 7 plus 3. And we take the absolute value of that. We get 10, and absolute value is 10. Right, we're measuring physical distance on the number line. Um, did order matter? Let's see. What if I did it the other direction? So we'll get negative 3 minus 7 for the opposite order. We'll get negative 10 in that absolute value, and we still get 10. Right, and that's because if I go 10 to the left or 10 to the right, I'm still traveling 10. So we're getting the same number either way. So the distance is 10. Um, so send me a message if you have any questions. We'll continue one, two in the next video.